everybody. Welcome to How to Make Your Wife Happy and Healthy. Sorry about the noise today that my kids are practicing. That's all right. We're going to take a special trip into my mom's kitchen. So come on. Let's go. Now we're at my mom's house. Grandma's house. And we're getting ready to make a dish from a now defunct magazine called Cooking Light. And in that dish, it's one of their best and well-liked dishes. Want to know what it is? Come on. Let's go see the ingredients. check out his channel links are down below you can see his wonderful buffalo chicken strips wrap which is a very tasty dish and he also has an imitation whataburger patty melt that you gotta try we can take his links down below before or after our video if you want to shout out my next video go ahead and skip to the end and see how to do it then come back and watch the rest of the video today we're making a pan seared strip steak it's got a butter sauce making it very tasty it goes great with mashed potatoes which Maybe I'll get around to doing that one and showing you how to do it. But for now, this pan sear strip steak is really tasty and it's cost effective. You can find the beef on sale for about $4 a pound. Here are the ingredients. 24 ounces of beef. In this case, I'm using a T-bone steak. You can use New York strip, whatever steak you like. One teaspoon of black pepper, or to taste. A teaspoon of kosher salt. I don't have kosher salt here, so I'm using iodized salt. So I'm gonna use half a teaspoon, or to taste. One tablespoon of olive oil. Two tablespoons of butter. Two cloves of garlic. Okay, today I'm using a T-bone steak. One, because my family likes the bone in their steak. They locked it off the meat off the bone, so that's part of this. Another reason, because it was cheap and on sale, only $3.99 a pound, which is a good price for us. So I decided to use this steak. So now you can add one teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of pepper, well, it's a half for each. I try to do it by eye. I know how much pepper I like, I know how much salt I like. So I am generous with my pepper. And I am stingy with my salt. You won't see me putting that much salt on it. So I'm not very big on salt. Now I'm gonna flip it over. See on the back side. Generous pepper amount. Stingy on my salt. There is a well seasoned steak ready to put in the pan. If I had a cast iron skillet, I'd be using that, but I don't, so I'm going to use this pan. It'll fit about one steak in there nicely. You can see I got the flame up to high, that's where you want it. You want to heat this up first once it's heated up. Once it's heated up, then you're going to add in the oil. Once you add in the tablespoon of oil. Actually, we need half a tablespoon, one for each steak. Then we're going to put in, heat up the oil. Then we're going to put on the steak. Cook it three minutes per side. Three minutes per side is nice. Then when that's done, we're going to put in the butter and melt it, add the garlic, get it nice and toasted. We'll continue to baste for about another minute to get that steak nice and buttery. Once it's done, we take it off the flame, then we slice it up. That's what we're going to be doing. You're going to see that in action now. Mashed potatoes. If you hear the blade in the background, that's just my daughter making up her mashed potatoes. I promise that recipe will be on the website eventually. Eventually. All right, here we go. Let's add our tailspin of oil. Oh, oh it's going to get really hot and really quickly because it's hot in there. Don't let it go on too long and spread it around. 
See how it flows easy? That means it's really hot. Uh, it starts to smoke. That means it's too hot. So try not to smoke point. So now we're going to put on the steak right away so it doesn't smoke up too much. I'm going to cook it about three minutes per side. All right, my daughter and I like it kind of uh, rare-ish, so I'm going to flip it over, maybe a little early. You can see that front side has lots of syrup. That's wonderful. That's what we want. Let it cook for another three minutes on the other side. Okay, that was about another three minutes. Now we're gonna do turn it down to low. Have a nice low flavor steak. Why? Because now it's time for the butter and garlic in the base. Tablespoon of butter. So I'm going to let the butter melt, get it all to the bottom of the pan. We're going to tilt the pan. You want to let the butter melt, get it at the bottom of the pan. We're going to tilt the pan for the basting for about a minute. That was close to a minute. So now we're gonna take it out and let it rest for 10. You can cover the foil so, enough so that it stays a little bit warm. I'll just get inside. And you wanna reserve all that juice at the bottom to pour it on the steak afterwards too. So here's that juicy steak. We're gonna cover it with foil and leave it for 10 minutes. We're gonna slice it up. Now the steak has rested for about 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and slice into it, see what it looks like. Careful to avoid the bones. Bone, bone. Bone down the middle. Maybe if I flip it over. See all those juices? Ah, there we go. That makes it easier to see the bones. Like Here's the thicker part, which should be more of a medium rare to medium. Okay, see I'm cutting around the bone. My family likes the bone. Not off of, there we go. Now let's just cut it into strips. Now let's take a look. Okay, more of a medium, see a little pink in the middle. You can see all that juice at the bottom of the tray.
Take a third slice. Oh yes, look at that, a little medium. Maybe a little more medium rare-ish. That's good. Slice it up to make it bite-sized pieces. For people to eat. There you go, let's walk up the rest of the steaks. And I'll serve them out and you'll see what they look like. Okay, here's the, here is the steak all cut up. Now we take the leftover sauce and put it over the steak. It's a very buttery, a little bit oily, garlicky sauce. And there you have pan seared strip steak. This time using the T-bone instead of a New York strip. Mm. Look at right, how that garlic and butter flavor really soaks into the meat of the T-bone steaks and makes it taste really good like a try to. My specialty mashed potatoes plus the rare meat make a good combo. Not as good as filet mignon, <laughs> but very good still. Since you've made it this far, go ahead and chomp on that like button just like my son and daughter chomped on their pan seared strip steak. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of all my new videos that come out on Mondays. And just to mess with those who don't watch this outro, why don't you slip the word fried chicken into your comment down below for a chance to shout in my next video. Thanks for watching and have a happy and healthy day. Mashed potato.